What's up fish freaks? Today I'm going to show you how to put together a brine shrimp hatchery and that's actually the easiest video I could do being that I'm out of town for fish of course and it was something that I can bring with me to do so here we go you ready I'm ready let's do it all right so what you're gonna need let me get down to your level what you're gonna need is two two liter bottles air supply, salt, kosher salt works just fine, brine shrimp eggs, a knife, and some scissors. Now you can use like a, an exacto knife or anything like that, this is just what I had on me right now and it works. <laughs> so. Alright, now you want to take your bottles, and usually what I do is like right at the line, so one, I already made some slits in this one, one you're going to cut at the base of this side, So you can go a little shorter on the base part. That's just my easier way. It really doesn't matter on that part. This is the part that the brine shrimp is going to actually be in. So, what you do is you take this part and fill it up with water. So you're about here. And I will go do that right now. Be right back. Okay guys, so as you can see, I filled up the water for the brine shrimp. Now, the temperature that this needs to be at is about 80 degrees. You don't want it to go extremely high because you'll cook them. And you don't want it to go extremely low because then they'll never hatch. It just won't happen. Um, so at this point, I put the water in. And you don't have to put any dechlorinating stuff or anything like that. Just regular tap water. It doesn't matter. So you add about a tablespoon of salt. 
right there. Yeah. A pinch of baking soda. It kind of regulates the pH and everything for the brine shrimp. And brine shrimp eggs. And I want to actually show you what these kind of look like. I like to do it. You can kind of see them right there. It looks like, you know, actually it looks like a bread machine yeast is what it looks like. It's kind of weird. See? Right there. There we go. And once you put, and again, I'm not going to set this up because I'm out of town and it would make no sense. I'd be wasting them. There, once the brine shrimp and the salt and the baking soda is all in there, this part is just regular hosing that I have right here. And then this is actually, it's the same thing, it's just black, but it's old, it's been used. So it, it kind of, it bends and stuff, but it stays generally in that straight line and it's a little bit harder to bend than this part. So I use that to stick in there and create the intense bubbles that the brine shrimp need. And uh, that's about it. Now when you get the brine shrimp and everything in there, in the area that you want them to be in, light. Light. You don't have to use a heat lamp. I just have an abundance of them. So that's what I use. It's easier for me. So, you can use any kind of lamp, it doesn't matter, but I find that with the heat lamps, you kind of have to back it up a little bit. You can't put it right on top of the bottle because you'll cook them, it'll be about 100 degrees of water and it's just good. You don't want that. So, uh, use a regular lamp, heat lamp, back it up a little bit, but the lamp is to keep the water at the temperature you want it to be at. So I would suggest kind of doing a trial run, having the bubbles and everything before the shrimp get in there. And kind of place the lamp and have a thermometer in there so you know what distance it needs to be at for the temperature that you're trying to get to. Okay? It's just, that way you don't have to waste brine shrimp. They're, they're, they're not incredibly cheap enough that where you want to go wasting it like that. So you turn the heat lamp on or lamp put it right next to it because it not only controls the temperature of the water, but brine shrimp actually need light to hatch. So it's very important. You don't want to skip that step and be like, oh well, you know, they'll, they'll just, it's hot in my house. It'll work. No, it won't. It won't work. Light. Shrimp. Best way. So that is about it. You have just created your first brine shrimp hatchery. Now, saying that, brine shrimp hatchery, it, it takes about 24 to 36 hours for the brine shrimp to hatch, where you can use them for your baby shrimp, or baby shrimp, <laughs> for your baby fish, your fry. Um, you're probably going to want to have about two of them going, depending on how many fish you have again. If you don't have a lot of babies, you know, two would be sufficient so that you have a batch of them every day and you're not going in between days not having food for your fish. Not a good thing. So two of them for your newly, your newborn fry, your just swimming, free swimming babies. That way it's consistent and you have it. And if you have any leftover brine that is just sitting in there that you didn't get to feed and it's you know, it's been you know, a few hours, hours. You can then feed that brine shrimp to your more adult or juvenile fry. You know, ones that can handle it. They can handle the bigger brine shrimp. So it's twofold. Don't just get rid of them thinking, oh, well, I can't feed it to my fry anymore. Feed it to the bigger fry. Or feed it to your adults. They love it. If you want them to breed, live food is the best way to do it. Best, by far. I mean, frozen is really good too. Frozen is really good. Flake food, uh, 
it just the thing the process with the flake food is they dry it out and all the nutrients are gone they're gone and then they have to actually put in nutrients after the whole process so it's it's just i don't really like flake food i don't like it and if you do use flake food be very choosy where you get it from very choosy very important. Okay, so that is this episode of Fish and Dish and how to do brine shirt patching. I hope you liked it. Um, tune in next week. I don't know what we're going to be doing yet because I'm out of town doing crazy things with fish and I haven't really had time to think about it. So, uh, but I will see you next week. Don't forget to comment below if you have any ideas on things that you want to know about and learn or whatever. Whatever. Just let me know. Subscribe. You know you want to. Alright. I'll see you next week then. Bye.